guys. So, I keep hearing speeches being given by people, both in Israel and in America, and I keep hearing this one phrase, on October 7th, everything changed. Folks, with a possible exception, not possible, but with the exception of the fact that Israel had to defend itself, I want to ask you a question. What changed? Because what they're talking about is, you know, the situation with Israel in terms of our enemies. What they're talking about, what they think they're talking about, is anti-Semitism, how it's come to the surface, and how our enemies, now we know our enemies want to kill us. My friends, again, setting aside the whole thing that we're at war, which for me is the only thing that changed, nothing changed. The Arabs always wanted to kill us. Europe, folks, I mean, I've been around what's called the Israel advocacy space for at least 12 years, probably almost 15 years. The Europeans absolutely despise us. I'm talking about the European governments. Maybe people in Europe like us, don't like us, whatever it is. The governments cannot stand us. For example, I remember like when I first started working in the wine industry, they had this European envoy guy from France. They asked him, why are you labeling things uh, that are coming in, you know, that it's not made in Israel, it's made in the occupied territory. Oh, we just want to be able to, for people to discern. You know, everything's very subtle, everything's very nuanced. My friends, for me it was obvious. Same thing with, all you, gotta, all you have to do was go and read YouTube comments since, I don't know, the early 2000s about Jews, about the Torah, you know? My friends, I heard this whole Khazar myth, Khazarian Empire myth in 2005 from people that I knew in the New York City club scene. My friends, none of this stuff uh, was hidden. It's just that you were ignoring it. You were choosing not to look at it. You were not awake to it. You were, you had your eyes closed because of some illusion of security, of being, uh, I don't know, a citizen of X, Y, and Z country that, you know, you're merely a guest of. And I include America in that. My friends, nothing changed on October 7th. The people that were already loud got even louder. The people that were loud on the internet, the people that were, so, so to speak, subtle in the international arena, which they really weren't, they were passing resolution after resolution after resolution in it against Israel and the UN for years already. They were talking about the two-state solution. What two-state solution, folks? For years, we were talking to entities that put up, you know, street street signs named after terrorists for years we heard from them for years we knew about Hamas for years Hamas was sending rockets for years 15 years 18 years I'm sorry 19 years what changed folks literally nothing changed it's just that you were so deep in this matrix that you know Neo got a serious wake-up call. There was a few of us. Guys, I'm not putting myself on a pedestal. Believe you me. I wish I didn't see these things. I wish I didn't notice these things. I wish I wasn't awake to these things. But I am. But I was. Me and a few other people. I mean, more than a few. But people in, like, the public space or whatever. We were noticing this stuff. We were posting about it for years. People like my friend Avi Abelo. People like my friend Eliokim Cohen. People like my, you know, he's not my friend, but acquaintance, Ishai Fleischer. 
they, they've been talking about this for years. They've been going on, you know, panels on television stations for years. People like my friend Mordechai Kedar. My friends. We all knew. We all saw. And we were telling you and telling you and telling you and telling you. These people want, you know, don't want peace with us. These people on campuses, are, you know, I, I, my friends, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I've been seeing this, these protesters. I remember seeing them in Chicago during the Lebanon War in 2006. I went to a house music festival in 2006 on Michigan Avenue. Free, free Palestine. Occupation is a crime. These were Lebanese Shiites. You know, and it was the Lebanon War, and they were screaming "Free Palestine," but Lebanon, Lebanon War. My friends, nothing changed, absolutely not a thing. We had the last, what was it, the, uh, Operation? Uh, what was that one in 2014 when the three boys were taken? Tsuketan. Pillar of Cloud, whatever you want to call it. We had these giant protests in, the, in in Manhattan. The same thing. I mean, guys, I, I don't know. What, what changed? Tell me. Again, apart from the fact that now we are in a serious, hot regional war, which is basically, a, you know, anybody who understands Torah understands it's basically the beginning of Gog and Magog, or it could be the beginning of something much larger, that's the change. That's that, for me. That's what changed. That we finally started taking care of business, what we needed to do for all these years. But apart from that, anti-Semitism always loud, even louder now. International, I don't know, condemnations always loud, even louder now. People who were subtle, you know, so to speak, subtle against us, even in the American administration, always loud even louder now even more meaning now it's unequivocal now it's like there's no suffix maybe you could say what changed maybe the, before there was like majority of the people thought there was like some kind of kind of doubt or suffix my friends I saw a video of a leftist guy a leftist politician in Israel he used to be a leftist he said we were wrong you were right who was you Russian speaking Israelis and Sephardi Israelis Rahim. My friends, this guy basically, can I tell you something? After October 7th, any person, any Jew who is not a follower of Rabbi Meir Kahana of Blessed Memory is brain dead. I'm repeating again. If you are a Jew, if you're in Israel, outside of Israel, you're pro-Israel, I don't care what party affiliation you are, I don't know, I don't care what you held by before October 7th. If you are not today a follower of Rabbi Meir Kahana, or at least a person who understands what Rabbi Meir Kahana was saying, when he was saying it, you are brain dead. If you weren't before this. And you're still brain dead, you remain brain dead. I'm telling you with tough love. He had a, he had a, a small quote, he said, if you want to know, and I'll end with this, if you want to know why the majority of my supporters are Sephardic Jews, because they never learned about Arabs at Georgetown University or at Berkeley. They learned about Arabs from living with Arabs and under Arabs. They are the last normal people untouched by college professors. My friends, you see who college professors are, so to speak, touching and what is the result of that? So I say again, if you're not a follower of Rabbi Kahana, your brain is dead. You're an NPC. I don't know. I hate to use the term because nobody's an NPC. But you're basically an NPC. My friends, nothing changed. It was always loud. The decibel was 90, and now the decibel is about, is about the decibel level is above 100. And if you can't hear it, then you're deaf. You gotta get your ears checked. Alright guys, talk to you soon.